Alright, in this experiment of uh, rotational motion, we are going to look at the conservation of angular momentum. Alright, so in angular momentum, you have an object that is rotating and rotating with a certain angular velocity. So here we have a disk that is rotating. And then, as the disk is rotating, you take a ring and then place it on top of the rotating disk. So it's like a collision. And then we're going to find the new angular velocity. And since there are no external torques acting, the initial angular momentum of the disk must be equal to their combined angular momentum. Well, here is the disk coming up. The mass of the disk is given. And the, there is the ring. The mass of the ring is also given. But in the lab, you will have to find the radius of the disk and also the inner and outer radius of the ring. Because the ring is going to have an inside radius, it's also going to have an outside radius. So these are the quantities that you would primarily measure. Again, the mass of the disk, the mass of the disk is given, the mass of the ring is given, and then you have to find the radius of the disk and the inner and outer radius of the ring. M1 is the mass of the disk. M2 is the mass of the ring. R is the radius of the disk. R1 and R2, as you can see, are the radii, the inside and the outside radii. The rotational inertia of a disk is given by one half mR squared. One half, in this case, M1 R squared. Now, in the second case, remember, it's the disk and the ring placed on top of that. So you have their combined rotational inertia, which is called I2. Therefore, I2 is 1 half M1 R squared, which is the rotational inertia of the disk, plus 1 half M2 times R1 squared plus R2 squared, which is the rotational inertia of the ring. So there you have the combined rotational inertia of both, which is called I2. All right, let's... Uh, angular momentum is given by the product of rotational inertia and angular velocity. So if the initial angular velocity of the disk alone is omega 1, then its angular momentum is I1 omega 1. Finally, the angular momentum is I2 omega 2, where omega 2 is the angular velocity of the disk and the ring together. And according to the conservation of angular momentum, I1 omega 1 is equal to I2 omega 2, from which we can experimentally, I mean theoretically, calculate omega 2 as I1 omega 1 by I2. So in order to do that, we would need I1 and I2 from these two formulas, I1 and I2, and we would also have to measure omega 1. So that's what we do in the lab. We try to find omega 1 where you have the system set up to a computer and then you measure omega 1. So we will use the observed value of omega 1 in order to put it into this formula and calculate omega 2. So that's where you would theoretically get the value of omega 2. Kinetic energy. Well, kinetic energy is the energy of motion and in rotation it's given by 1 half I1 omega 1 squared. First case. In the second case, it's 1 half I2 omega 2 squared. So it's easy to calculate the kinetic energy knowing the values of I1 omega 1 and I2 omega 2. Because now we have 
theoretically calculated omega 2, right? We can find that. Here are the numbers that are measured in the lab. The radius of the disk is 11.35 centimeter. Oh, you got to change it into meter. That's the radius of the disk, 11.35 centimeter. And here are the radii of the ring, R1, 5.34 centimeter. That's the inner radius. R2, just coming up. It, I can remember it's six point something. Let's see. R2 is 6.3 centimeter. That's the outer radius. You need the masses. The masses are also given. And here are the masses. M1, 1.41 kilogram. That's the mass of the disc. M2, that's the mass of the ring, which is 1.44 kilogram, just a little bit over that, right? So those are the values that you need. So what we need is actually the angular velocity just before uh, the ring is dropped on the disc and the angular velocity just after it's dropped. All right, so that's omega one is the angular velocity just before the ring is placed on the disc. Omega two is the angular velocity just after it's placed on the disc. So using the value of omega one that we obtained from the lab, we're gonna get the theoretical value of omega two and then also from the graph, we're going to get the experimental value of omega 2. So the calculated value using I1 omega 1 is equal to I2 omega 2. That calculated value of omega 2 is the theoretical value. But at the bottom of the graph, we see the value of omega 2 obtained experimentally. Those are the two values that we are comparing. Now the rest of the information is given in the lab document and you can fill it up. You have to calculate the rotational kinetic energies of both and find the percentage loss. You also got to compare the theoretical value of omega 2 and the experimental value of omega 2 and then answer the questions that follow. All right, I hope you understood this lab. And this is the best we can do in these circumstances. So try to see what we're doing and then try to complete the lab document, put it into there and submit it on time. I hope you understood the idea of angular momentum from this lab. See you on the next video. Thank you.